All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, glory, respect, and blessings to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Heavenly Father, all praises, glory, honor, respect, and blessings to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash. Salutations to the Lord's elect on the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth and sincerity while patiently waiting for it. Yahweh Shah's return and double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, which have taught us everything we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai. And welcome to another in transit. This video is being brought to you by the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai. This video is going to be about how Cornelius is an Israelite okay that's right Cornelius is an Israelite and the best way to understand that is you first got to know your enemy outside your nation okay you got people who say that Cornelius was an Edomite right well let's look at some of the characteristics of an Edomite know your enemy right so let, let's look at some of the characteristics of an edomite we know that according to romans chapter 3 verse 18 they don't fear the heavenly father okay in romans 3 and 18 it tells you that there is no fear of the most high before their eyes okay also, when we go to the book of Psalms, the 14th chapter, it clearly state, no, when we go to the, yeah, well, when you go to the book of Psalms, the 14th chapter, it says what? The fool have said in his heart, there is no God. So you know why they don't fear the most high? Because they, they don't believe he exists. You know, they think they, you know, these Edomites, they think they rose themselves up to power and, you know, everything they got, they got by their own hands, by their own wisdom, intelligence, strength, knowledge, wisdom, not knowing that the Lord gave them all those things. Proverbs 20, verse 24, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? But we know that they don't fear the most high because the fool have said in their heart, there is no God. And like Job said, right, they were children of fools children of base men and what is a fool a fool is an unlearned person okay an unwise person because a wise person is a person who's well studied who's well learned okay so we know that Edomites don't fear the most high right we also know that they don't believe in a higher power so if they don't believe in a higher power if they don't believe in the most high then guess what they're not going to do what he said to do. And well, what did the Lord tell us to do? Well, it's in the first five books of Moses. You know, the Lord told us exactly what we need to do in order to serve him, which could be found in the first five books of Moses. You know, the law, statutes and commandments of the Holy Scriptures. Now we keep them to the best of our ability. We're not going to be saved on keeping the law, statutes and commandments, but we keep the law, statutes and commandments that we can keep to the best of our ability. Okay, now in the book of Psalms, the 10th chapter, right? It tells you that the wicked, and who's the wicked? That's the Edomites. Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we shall return and, re and build the desolate places. Thus saith Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, they shall build, but I will throw down and they shall call them the border of wickedness. You see that? Edom is the border of wickedness. And, and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. Because um, in the book of Exodus, the Lord said that he would have war with Amalek from generation to generation. But the point is, is that in the book of Psalms, the 10th chapter, right? It tells you that the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after Yahweh. okay? Yahweh is not at all in his thoughts. So the wicked, the Edomites, the so-called white man, he's not thinking about the Most High. He's thinking about himself. 
his ambitions, his agenda. You know, he he's not he he's not he's not with full forwarding the agenda of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. He's he's for his own agenda, which is what that new world order. So we know that the wicked is not going to seek after the, the the wicked, which is the Edomites. We know they're not going to seek after the Mosai. Okay, why? Because God is not at all in his in his mind, and the fool have said in his mind there is no God. Which goes back to Romans 3 and 18. There is no fear of Yahweh before their eyes because they don't believe in a higher power. Okay. You know, now in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 11, it says what? Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness in the land of uprightness. Okay, he, he will deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. And what's the majesty of the Lord? That's his ways, his law, statutes, and commandments. You know? And it's like that with, 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 with the other heathens, you know? Heathens, heathens, heathens don't, don't really believe in a Mosai. But the so-called white man, he especially don't believe in a Mosai. Now... When we look at Cornelius, okay, who is an Israelite, it tells you that Cornelius feared the Most High and gave reverence and he prayed. Okay, how the hell are you going to pray to a God if, 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 if you don't believe in him? That don't make any sense, right? We know that Cornelius feared the Most High and he also, he was also a charitable person. You know, he gave charity. That's in uh, Malachi, I believe the third chapter, it speaks about your tights. That's also in the book of Leviticus, it speaks about your tights. So we can also say that Cornelius kept the laws. Who were the laws, statutes, and, and commandments given to? The Israelites, okay? So we know that Israelites are going to fear the Most High. And guess what? Cornelius feared the Most High. And he prayed to him, always. You know, he prayed to him always. You know, it takes faith to pray to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, and for your prayers to be to be heard. Does, yeah, because the scriptures speak about you know when you pray to the Most High, you're not supposed to waver. You're not supposed to question if your prayers are going to be heard. Okay. Okay. Now check this out. You know the scriptures called Cornelius pious, right? When 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 you look up the word pious, the word pious literally means religiously uh, uh, devoted. Okay. Cornelius was a man who was de who was devoted to serving Yahweh while Yahweh shy. Okay. He was pious. You know. Oh yeah. The word pious also means somebody, uh, a, a, a observer of the law, statutes, and commandments. So we know that Cornelius was also a observer of the law, statutes, and commandments of the scriptures. Okay? And he, 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 uh, he would pay alms. So those are all traits of Israelites. Israelites have only the Israelites have been known for fearing and serving the Lord. But then you'll get a jackass, you know, some 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 random big lip bald headed hurt nigga, you know, tears coming out of his not tears coming out of his eyes. Nah, man, he, he know Cornelius was an Edomite, man. See, it proves that Edomites can make it, bro. You you, you know how them them niggas get, man. The bald headed sweating. But we got, got 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 a big fucking gap in his tooth and shit, be between his two tooths. Nigga looking like a beaver and shit. Talking ta ta talking about Cornelius was an Edomite, bro. <laughs> the type of nigga who say bro with a W instead of an R. He was an Edomite, bro. Nah, no, he wasn't. No, Cornelius was an Israelite. Okay. And furthermore, we know that the Lord is not the after of confusion. 
Okay? We know that the Lord is not the after of confusion. Goodness gracious. Okay? Because in Hebrews 12 and 16, it says what? Lest there be any fornicator or profaned person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessings, he was rejected. Why? For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Now, when we go to Malachi 3 and 6, we know that it says the Lord don't change. OK, it literally says, for I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So we know that the Lord is not a double minded man. OK, he's not going to just change his mind and then start it. You no, know, start, start opening up, you know, to to the other nations. Nah, the Lord don't change. So we know that Edomites have no hope of salvation in the uh, Zonovan's uh, Compact Bible Dictionary, which was written by so-called white people. They tell you that Edom uh, uh, was the only nation that was not promised any mercy. So how the hell could Cornelius be an Edomite? He wasn't. He was an Israelite, you know. He could have been an Israelite that, that looked like an Edomite, you know. But he was an Israelite, you know, because the Lord's going to put the spirit in, in all of us. The Lord's going to put the spirit in, in his people to serve him. You see? You know, in order to understand, you know, how Cornelius was an Israelite, you know, you have to. Uh... So, like, I'm going to cut through it real quick. In order to understand that Cornelius was an Israelite, you have to first know the characteristics of your enemy outside your nation. And then you have to know the characteristics of your people. If Edomites will not behold the majesty of the Lord, what does that mean? They're not going to keep the Lord's law, statutes, and commandments. They're not going to perform that which the Lord said. And what's the proof of that? Well, all you got to do is look all around you. The Lord said that we're not supposed to have skyscrapers. And here it is. We have skyscrapers. You know? You know, the Lord said, you know, here it is. Today's the Sabbath, right? The Lord clearly tells us not to cook or work on the Sabbath. But what is this devil doing? He got people working on the Sabbath. Look at that. Business is booming right now on the Sabbath. Okay. It, 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 there's no businesses that's supposed to be open. But you see, this is living proof that they will not behold the majesty of the Lord. They're not going to keep the Lord's laws, statutes and, laws, statutes and commandments. But we know that Cornelius kept the Lord's law, statutes and commandments. OK. And he prayed. He, he even prayed to the Most High. You know, Edomites were have There's there's never been any records of, of Edomites praying to the Most High. So. Where the hell do people get this idea that Cornelius was an Edomite? Because well, when Peter first went to him, he said that uh, that 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 the Lord said that that I shouldn't come to somebody of another nation. Okay. Well, guess what? They have no understanding of that either. 
Because when Peter said that uh, he he's not one that, that that should come to somebody of another nation, he wasn't he wasn't speaking in a sense that Cornelius was of another nation. No. In the Old Testament, I don't I don't know the the exact book, chapter or verse, but in the Old Testament, the Lord said that um the Lord said the Heavenly Father said that that um that that he would. He would provoke our people to jealousy by 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 um by 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 going to a people um by 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 um going to a people which were not called by his name or something like that. Which he was talking about he was talking about provoking the he was talking about provoking our people to jealousy by by basically dealing with the Israelite Gentiles. Okay? Because the Lord, the Lord clearly said that um, he would he would provoke our people in, in the Old Testament. He said that he would provoke our people to jealousy by going to uh, a people of, of of another nation, which he wasn't talking about dealing with another nation. You know, he was actually talking about you know go, going to the Israelite Gentiles. That's why in the Book of Matthew, right? What did Yahweh say? He said he has not come but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay? He has not come but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And what is that? Who are those lost sheep? That's those Israelite Gentiles who don't know they're Israelites. You see? That's talking about the Israelites who, who didn't know they were Israelites. They might have looked like Hamites. They could have looked like Edomites. They could have looked like uh, Ishmaelites, uh, uh, Arabs, East Indians, Elamites, so-called white people, Edomites, Hamites, Africans, you know, which are the Africans, you see? So the lost sheep are, are those Israelite Gentiles, Israelites that look like people of another nation, but they were still Israelites because their father's lineage on their father's side goes back to a so-called Negro, Latino, or Native Indians, okay? And that's also according to the book of Numbers, 1 and 18, where it says that uh, the Israelites shall be gathered by the pedigree, by, by, by the pedigree, the house of their fathers, roughly paraphrasing. When it says the house of their father, when you look up that word house, that word house goes back to lineage, okay? Your bloodline, okay? The man, the man determines the nationality of his child. So, if your father is an African, you're an African. If your father's a, a so-called white person, then you're a white, so-called white person, a Edomite. If your father, father's line go back to Amalek, you're an Amalekite. It's just plain and simple, man. It gets a bit crowded around here, so you know, excuse me. You know, if 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 uh if your father's a Chinese person, you're a Chinese person. If your father is a Japanese person, you're a Japanese person. If your father's an Israelite, you're an Israelite. So you see. Your father dictates your nationality. Point blank period, you know. So Cornelius, his his father's lineage goes back to Israelites. Okay? And the fact that, you know, he was keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, and he was even praying to the Most High, which takes faith. Scriptures tell you in Ephesians that faith is a gift. I believe that's Ephesians, the uh, third chapter. Faith, faith is a gift. Okay. And, and, and faith is a gift that is given to an uh, Israelite from the Most High. The Most High is not going to give a heathen faith to believe in them. Point blank, period. Oh my God, you see that? Heathen city. Look at all these heathens.
Look at all these heathens. Look, heathen city. <laughs> oh my God. Heathen city. But Cornelius was not a heathen. Cornelius was an Israelite. Okay. In um, the book of Psalms, 147, I believe, verse 17, it tells you that the Lord showed his statutes un unto Jacob, his, uh, his laws unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation, meaning what? He have not dealt so with any other nation. There's only one nation of people that the laws, statutes, and commandments was given to, and that's the Israelites. You see? You know, the law, statutes, and commandments was given only to our people, no other nation. So we can also say that Cornelius was an Israelite because he kept the law, statutes, and commandments. And he feared the Most High. And in Romans 3 and 18, it tells you that Edomites, Romans 3 and 18 tells you that Edomites don't fear the Most High. But Cornelius feared the Most High. That's a trait of an Israelite. It takes faith to fear the Most High. And faith is a gift, which is a... Uh, oh, it's a waterfall. Faith, faith is a gift, and that's according to Ephesians. But yeah, you know, I just wanted to do a video on that, man. You know, from time to time again, there'll be a controversy on the whole thing. With that, I'm gonna say, Shalom. So on to the next one.